Does your Wi-Fi suck? I'm sure it does. It always comes down to two simple reasons. This video will give you the knowledge that has solved countless Wi-Fi issues for my clients. So let's find out two reasons why your Wi-Fi sucks. Hey, I'm B the Installer. I'm a TV and smart home installer in San Diego. And now I'm taking my talents to South Beach. No, I'm kidding. I brought them to YouTube where I quickly found out there are many smart consumers, but we all need more info, right? And I'm betting that you have the exact same issues with Wi-Fi that my customers have. Things like buffering and blurry resolution or literally no signal. Not fun to deal with. So I'm gonna go over the two main issues by giving you important tips. And the second one is a majority of the video and it ends with me making specific recommendations for Wi-Fi devices that I literally could make an entire video on each device. So I'm rolling it all into one helpful video, so I hope you enjoy. But before I give away the farm, smash the like button. I'll remind you again, but if you want others to learn, you gotta smash it up. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you wanna get all the info. Set the notification bell so you're notified when I upload a new video. So Wi-Fi, man, we all have Wi-Fi issues. I've even had major issues on occasion, but luckily I know how to solve these issues. And the first of the two issues is speed, or lack thereof. And you can't get around speed. You have to have it, at least some of it. The most important part of speed is the internet company that you use. When I get questions and concerns about people's Wi-Fi, I always ask who they use for their ISP, or internet service provider. Now most people have internet from their cable providers. Internet from cable providers can be plenty fast. I have Charter, Spectrum, I mean it was Time Warner, but some of these companies buy and sell each other so fast it gets confusing. Other similar cable companies like Comcast and Cox Communication also provide pretty sweet download speeds, but not always very good upload speeds. So the quality of your Wi-Fi depends on both upload and download speeds. And while the typical 100 to 200 megabit download is really good for most people, the upload speeds can be where you really see some issues with cable companies. Many times the upload speed will only be one tenth of the download speed or worse. And if you have only five or 10 megabit per second upload speed, for example, that can be an issue when trying to connect to Netflix or for fast web browsing. When there is a long delay after you press a button because that info going back and forth and back and forth gets bogged down with the slow upload speeds. More often than not, people are unaware that they have slow upload speeds and thus can be frustrated if they're told to have 100 or 200 megabits per second download speeds. But overall, cable modem is typically your safest bet for service and once that info does come back down, streaming is pretty fast and consistent. Now the only way to destroy cable modem is by having fiber internet. Having a fiber optic line from AT&T is really awesome. Now don't be fooled with AT&T because they'll absolutely misinform you on whether they actually have fiber or not in your area. And without fiber, their service is eh. I've seen many customers told incorrect information. 300 or 600 megabits per second or even one gig is far from the actual 45 or 50 or less they offer over their typical copper lines. And not a whole lot needs to be said if you have one gig internet speed. Even if it's uploading at 20 or 50 times faster than cable, that's pretty awesome, right? And it should be straightforward. If speed is a must and they offer the highest speeds in your area, then yes, I highly recommend AT&T Fiber Internet. So what about the misinformation? So these companies can be so huge that you really can get the runaround by their customer service. Many of the people you talk to will one, be misinformed, Two, they may not have the most updated info, or three, they may be in a call center outside of the US and not even be fully qualified to understand the technology being used in your area, or all three of those things. But it's taken me three, four, five calls just to get legit info on what a customer has. And if you're on an AT&T plan that is 45, 50, or 75 megabit per second, normally it's gonna be pretty bad service because those plans say that that is the most speed that you will get and many times depending on where you are in the food chain on the service line, you're likely gonna get worse. AT&T is super inconsistent outside of the fiber internet. I see far more issues with their service over other cable companies. So in general, I tell customers that if you can get quality fiber at speeds, then go for AT&T. Otherwise, stick to cable modem and take the 100 or 200 megabits per second. In either case, 
Call up your current provider and threaten to leave if they don't make you a better deal and give you better equipment. Do that with your cable service as well if you still have cable. And lastly on the speed, I know many people live in rural areas and there aren't a lot of options. Some opt for cable service, which is supposed to get faster in the near future, and others can use cellular hotspots if it's better than the ISP providers. If neither of those works, I would encourage those people to just move into a city and get better speed. No, I'm kidding, but if you really can't get any more speed, then it's time to talk about the other main point with sort of some sub points about why your internet sucks, which is coverage. Coverage is sort of vague, but it's extremely important. I see speed and coverage right down the middle as far as which is more important. Speed and poor coverage in a house is not very helpful. And if you have a robust network, but no speed, it's just as bad. But how do you get the best coverage? Now that's what we need to answer. In the past few years, people have called me to tell me that they've gotten a new router and asked me to install it. And I get there and they have a big Nighthawk router with like nine antennas for their 4,000 square foot odd shaped house, just one unit. So it strikes me that people don't really understand how to get good coverage. You really just can't cover an entire home and property with a single signal source. Nah, it's kind of a bad choice of words. I don't care how many antennas you have on that one router and how much you paid for it, it's not likely gonna give you the coverage that a three unit mesh Wi-Fi system would, for example. And either a small condo or a massive mansion, a cheap mesh system is still gonna give you better consistent coverage in your home over a single access point. So if you're wondering, a mesh Wi-Fi system is basically a multiple unit router that comes in two or more units or nodes that mesh together sort of like cell phone towers to create a stable and even network throughout your home. When you're streaming or computing, your device will connect wirelessly to the closest node or access point, and that info will then ping back to the main unit in extremely fast manner. So just with this basic info, you should understand that they can cover much larger areas evenly. The internet routers and modem router combos that all the providers give you are typically only good for small homes and apartments. I've seen them fail even on thousand square foot condos, depending on where the unit is located, what the walls are made of, and who the provider is. Now, some may get away with having theirs installed central to your home and it can work, but many times it's not working great throughout the home or the property. In that upstairs bedroom or the downstairs man cave, someone's getting a bad signal. One of the worst fails any good installer can make is to allow a customer to put their only router inside of a master bedroom closet. And if you have your router right there now, and you can't get any speed in the downstairs living room, now you know why. Likely that unit is trying to get through six different walls on its way to streaming that show or movie, and this is why you're the one on the Zoom call that keeps dropping signal. And the dudes from AT&T or Spectrum or Comcast are pretty unlikely to give you this info or recommend a better router. In all honesty, they're busy people doing tons of jobs a day and it's not really their job to get your son or daughter better coverage in their rooms for their TikTok videos. And some just don't have the background to really know the alternative products as well. But I do have some recommendations on good systems and I'm about to give you some details, both general and specific, on which products you can buy to bolster your Wi-Fi signal speed. But first I wanna touch on one thing that kinda of spans both speed and coverage, which is, what signal should you use? Many people don't know if they should use the 2.4 gig or the five gig frequencies, and most of the time they don't even know which one they're currently using. So you can see why so many people struggle with Wi-Fi. Simply put, the 2.4 gig frequency actually has more range, but is normally slower than the five gig frequency. And the five gig is much faster and less congested, but it doesn't have the max range that the 2.4 gig has. You really wanna use the five gig network if you can. So if your device sees the five gig, use it. If your device is older, it may only see the 2.4 gig. And some software, as well as hardware, it won't even find the five gig, but most do. On the positive side, most mesh networks just give you one name and then automatically use the fastest and most efficient frequency. So let's get into the best solutions and routers. As I said, 
call your provider and make sure they're giving you the fastest speed. But then besides that, the absolute best tip I can give you, the same tip that I give my clients struggling with crappy Wi-Fi, is to ditch the router that the cable company gave you and get a mesh Wi-Fi system. Especially if you have a larger, odd-shaped, or thick-walled home. And pretty much any mesh system will be an upgrade, but one of the very best systems for me is the Netgear Orbi. I have not found a system that is as massive or fast as the Netgear Orbi. And I mean massive as in like the units are pretty large and the coverage is amazing. I have literally used like every Orbi system ever made for someone's home. And the two or three pack units like the RBK50 or RBK53 are really good. And if you really want their top tier unit, you know, you can use something like the Wi-Fi 6 routers that are even faster and they can handle more devices. Whether it's Wi-Fi 6 or not, the best routers are tri-band. And that means they have three network frequencies instead of the normal two that most routers have. And having three gives you more bandwidth and speed and keeps the congestion to a minimum. Now for the average person, I don't think you need Wi-Fi 6 as the Orbi is pushing $500 and up and sometimes over $1,000 but I'm just saying that's the best. I would really consider Wi-Fi 6 if you have 200 megabits per second or faster internet speeds, or if you have 20 or 30 devices consistently in the home. Also, if you game, they now have the Moomimu technology, which dedicates and prioritizes bandwidth to the most needy and important devices. Moomimu. Mumimu. When you set up your mesh Wi-Fi system, any of them really, make sure that you set them all up in the same room. It is so much easier to place the two or three units by each other, set them up, update the software, and once it's all good, then you can take the satellites to the other areas of the house and test the speed and range. Because some of the software is a bit of a headache and the Orbi is one that seems to take a while. But once it's set up and you spread them out, it flies and you really never have to think about it again. And if you really want an Orbi, but these seem too expensive, Check the links below as there is also a really good refreshed option like the RBK43 or whichever two or three unit refresh one that they have. This is where Amazon sells the refurbished products at a discount and you can save a ton of money. They're always in basically new condition. Maybe the box is brown versus white, but I would take a refreshed Orbi over a similarly priced router most days of the week. After Netgear Orbi, second place is pretty much an even split between great systems like the Eero by Amazon and the Linksys Velop. Again, both companies have good entry level and high end units. The Velop is a little bulkier and not quite premium looking, but they're very easy to use and they're pretty solid. And the Euro is one of the most premium options, but their prices are no joke. And sometimes you need to use more nodes for the same square footage that the Orbi can handle. So because of the expense and the smaller range, I find it hard to recommend Eero to some of my clients as they may need to buy four or five or more of the nodes. And some Euro fans really don't mind and you may really like them especially the Euro Pro Wi-Fi 6. The Google Wi-Fi is also cool, sleek looking Wi-Fi system. It's very easy to set up and pretty foolproof. However, again, the Google Wi-Fi doesn't have the best range and I found that it can't always handle the 4,500 square feet that they claim it does. And I've had some complaints and so it's not my most recommended unit. And there are even less expensive options like the TP-Link Deco units and others that are just fine for most people who want to get good coverage throughout their homes. I've had the TP-Link M5 and S4 and both dual band routers are pretty much out of sight, out of mind, pretty good units. And on most good mesh Wi-Fi systems, they even have ethernet ports. So for gaming, you can still hardline to one or all of the devices. And best yet, if you have ethernet drops in each room, you can set it all up to have each satellite hardline for max speed and connectivity though it's not needed in most cases. So do you have good speed? Do you have good coverage? Let me know below what you have. I'm really interested to know what people have out there and any Wi-Fi related questions that you might need answered. And I hope this video has helped you out. Smash the like button if you've learned a little bit about Wi-Fi. Subscribe to get practical videos on technology. Ring the bell so you know when I upload one. And just like that, you can be the installer.